Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going back to the book The Science of Wrestling and the Art of Jiu-Jitsu. It's from 1923. I've discussed it before, I believe last year. So today what we're going to be looking at is not only takedowns and submissions, but also transitions. So uh, I really like how they thought of transitioning when it comes to holding submissions and also going down with them to the ground. We all know that judo is a great uh, art when it comes to transitions, uh, specifically after attempted throws or failed throws. But here it's something that you can carry with you. Not that it's not in judo, it is, but with the current rule set is a bit different. Uh, but nonetheless, let's get to it. So the first one is of course the bread and butter. I'm gonna just put this uh, in the beginning to show it. It's the double wrist lock or ude garami. You have many directions to it. This one here, you see that it is done while lifting the elbow up uh, towards the head of uke. While here, you see it is reversed. Uh, this is what people commonly call this kimura, but it's a reversed ude garami. Now. Let's take a look at all three directions in judo or jujitsu. So the first one here, the same one as we just saw in the book. It's very important to have both elbows past the shoulder and uh, ribs line of the uke because you can post your elbows on the ground and from there you can have complete control and isolation of the arm. Uh, if you have uh, your elbow on your their chest, uh, it's not going to work. Here you see the inverted variation. If positioned correctly, you can tap them very early. One piece of advice is to get their fist close to their armpit when you're doing this variation. The lever becomes much shorter and the tap comes much sooner. So it's a very painful position uh, submission, targets the shoulder. But if you do it in a different position, it can also target uh, the elbow. Uh, if you stretch out uh, the arm. So let's take a look at the third position. If they're trying to resist bending their arm uh, outward or stretching it out outward, you can actually do the same, but target the elbow by lifting your elbow against theirs. The next one is actually very interesting. So here, this is a starting position from what I understand from the book. So what the wrestler in white shoes does is threads his head underneath uh, both arms and gets uh, behind uh, in the second position as you see with the photo on the right and grabs the ankle and from there drops L notice how he's hooking uh, the leg with his own uh, keeping the arm tight to him and rolling the far ankle outward very similar to what we do today in you know uh, new kataguruma or uh, yoko otoshi which is actually uh, a sutemi Depending on the uh, direction, this is, for example, ukiwaza, if they are thrown forward, but they're grabbing the ankle, they're grabbing the arm. Obviously, there's no jacket, but it's the very similar concept where you hook the leg, you block it, and you roll them forward, and you pin them. Um, this next one is, of course, the very famous flying mare. I've discussed this in the uh, Irish collar and elbow style and here you see it also in wrestling without the jacket and without the gripping ippon serenage called in judo also one of the first techniques that you will learn and one of the most effective you see it all throughout the world in indian wrestling greco-roman wrestling etc so it's a hand technique do not mistake it for a hip throw now next it's gonna be uh, this one is incredible so you have a double wrist lock grip but the way you roll them it kind of looks like a makikomi rolled to me um, it's like a soto makikomi but you actually grip a double wrist lock and then you roll them to the side but he's doing it from the ground but from the standing it can also be achieved so the way he's gripping here he can simply just grab his wrist and entangle the arms and finish the throw and you can get into a double wrist lock position. Um, th again, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to 
transitions. It's that uh, wrist lock grip. Kimura would do sumigayashi from the ude garami grip. But here also soto makikomi can be a great choice as well. Here this is a counter to a counter. So you're attempting a double wrist lock. He pulls back, keeps his arms close. So what you do is actually entangle the leg, the far leg, as in kawazugake in judo. And then from there you can either attempt the lock, you bring them closer to you through that hook, or obviously you can go to the ground uh, with them. So let's take a look at kawazugake. Uh, it is a banned technique today in judo because of the entanglement. It can cause injury to the leg. But here you see you can go to the ground with them and continue grappling. But um, there is obvious risk to this. Um, it can really damage the knee. Now, the next one is your classical calf slicer where you put the leg, your leg, uh, on top of theirs and then curl using the toes as a lever and really crushing the calf and it causes a lot of pain this is very classical you see it here in the 1910s but instead of using your own leg you use theirs and then you push and apply pressure to the knee and the calf muscle now this is a very sick bicep slicer um, you can actually find this also in a judo when you have a hard time finishing a juji getame or an armbar that's when you can actually cross your legs figure for them and apply pressure to the bicep and elbow um, but in the wrestling photo he has the leg well rather than on top of the head it's uh, underneath you can figure four lock and really uh, pin the elbow and the neck by uh, figure fouring and really going underneath the head with the shin under the neck uh, but this is also a very viable option and a great uh, way to finish a very stubborn opponent who does not want to be uh, tapped out. So I'll leave a link in the description below for the book. Again, I've discussed it uh, before. It's a great book. He, he also goes at the end, in the end with uh, jujitsu self-defense. You can see him wearing his suit and tie and doing very similar techniques that the one Maeda did. So very classical self-defense techniques of jiu-jitsu. So um, you'll find the book in the description below. If you have anything else to add, please let me know down below and consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content and supporting this channel. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.